Babe, what are you doing? You're gonna ruin my nods. What are you doing? Practicing. <laughs> hey boys, welcome back to Larperators Anonymous, where all of your LARPing fantasies can come true from behind that big screen of yours. Let me slip into something a little more comfortable. What's up guys? <laughs> welcome back to the channel. So this is Larperators Anonymous. I am Chris, I am a LARPaholic, and I can't stop buying gear that I don't need. I don't need it, but I keep on buying it. One of my biggest sins to date is ordering a PVS-14, showed up on my porch while I was at work, my wife signed for it, I get home, she goes, hey babe, what's this? As I'm cutting it open, I go, hey babe, it's night vision. Don't worry, I won it in a raffle. <laughs> she still believes that to this date, babe, if you're watching, forgive me. Guys, get down in the comments, let me know what your biggest LARPing sin has been. I wanna know exactly how much money you spent on your first rifle, and then how much money now you think you've spent in total on your highest tier rifle. Get down and let me know. And also, how many of you guys are actually running night vision? Like, I'm, I'm genuinely curious. I know it's becoming more popular. I just got into it, so I, I know it's kind of a newer thing, but how many of you guys actually run night vision? I know that intro was so extra, but it was fun to film though. And yes, I know that single man CQB is an absolute death trap. No, you shouldn't do it. It was just for fun. I know that I, or there's probably someone slamming on a keyboard saying, I would have penetrated you from like 18 different directions. Good for you. But you forgot. One man CQB, the first rule is always brag out. <laughs> but anyway, let's get into this. Today, we are going over this guy right here, the designate IRV. And so the question today is, is the Designate IRV the best civilian, specifically civilian class laser illuminator on the market? All right guys, so the manufacturer of this laser is, I've been calling them Threer, but it is Three Infrared is the name of the company. They manufacture this laser. However, um, US Night Vision does have their own branded version of this laser. And full disclosure, I do know uh, the folks over at US Night Vision. They are local to me, and I know there's some industry drama surrounding them, but I'm going solely based off my personal experience. And I've been talking to Steve and, and Chris Bird, and they've both been phenomenal. Um, when I first started getting into night vision, I had a ton of questions. They let me come to their office, test out a ton of different tubes, test out their laser, the, the Designate IRV, um, and then a bunch of different civilian class lasers in their office and gave me a tour. They were super responsive to my emails. They sold me my bump helmet, uh, counterweights. They just gave me a ton of extra information and detail and have been great. So I'm not gonna go off, I'm just going off my personal experience. No industry drama is trying to change my opinion. However, I'm getting to the point that I do know some of them. Uh, they're not great friends or anything. They know me, but it's not like we hang out, you know, and go out for beers and pizza and shit. But my laser is a Threer branded laser. So I've also had communications with David Romberg, who um, to my knowledge is the owner of 3EIR. And uh, when I had some customer service issues, which we'll get into that later. So I have had communications with him. He's also been awesome. He's been super responsive. Um, I'd email him, get an email back 20 minutes later. Um, their turnaround time when I had an issue, which like I said, we'll get into later. Um, and I had the, uh, the laser back within a week. So uh, they've been awesome as well. So I'm gonna roll some specs onto the screen and we can just go over the, uh, the specs of the laser itself. With the battery, uh, mine is weighing seven ounces. It is a visible laser um, and an IR laser and it is the, the Viscal or VSCEL uh, illuminator. It said it is a five hour runtime off one single CR123. And there's a few other specs here. I don't know if you guys care. I mean, I'm sitting here to read them off to you. Uh, the housing strength, that is a 3D printed uh, house and it's rated at 7,500 PSI. It is submersible um, or IP68 submersible for one minute or one meter for three minutes. Let's see, it can operate negative 20 degrees to 60 degrees Celsius. There is, and this is one of the big points, guys, there is a two-year warranty with this laser, which if you're familiar with gray market lasers, obviously if you're buying a full power pack, a full power mall, an Ingall, anything like that off you know, Facebook, you obviously don't get a warranty. If anything breaks on the laser, you're just shit out of luck and there goes your three to $5,000. 
Um, however, though, I mean, I've seen pecs that are broken, you know, on, online, never seen one in person, but they, they do seem to break, but there's also people that have full power pecs they've had for 20 years and are still going strong and they beat the living shit out of them. So uh, take that with a grain of salt, but it is a great that you do get uh, some type of warranty with this, which is one of my big reasons for going for a, a civilian laser. All right, so <clears throat> now that we've gotten through kind of the basic specs, all the boring stuff, I'm gonna go over um, kind of the positives of this laser and then I'm gonna go over some of the negative experiences I've had and then is this laser worth $2,000 is, is the bottom line question. So first thing I'm gonna go over and we're gonna go over positives is <clears throat> the visco illuminator and that thing is absolutely amazing. I'll, I'll roll in some footage here. I've taken this laser personally out to about 400 meters or 400 yards and still easily be able to illuminate and see targets. <clears throat> All right, guys, I'm in out in my local park. You can still see there still is <clears throat> obviously some light pollution going on, but I'm going to start off with just the IR laser. Ooh, last song in the sky. So actually, if you guys can make that out, I'm going to light it up in a second. That is a goal post over there with a fence behind it. There is a white sign that is 320 yards away. So here's it going through some light over there and you can still see it's defeating that photonic barrier and you can still see that laser so moving back over this way towards the fence all right now here is with the diffuser cap here is with the diffuser cap on and you can see here even going to those trees those trees are 100 yards away and it's still lighting those guys up Right here in the field, you can see it's got a fairly decent flood going all the way. So you can still off, on, off, on. So even with this floodlight on, you easily can get out to 100 meters and identify targets. All right, flood is off. Here's the focused illuminator. All right, see now you can really see that white sign that the pointer's on right in between those two goalposts. That is 300 meters away. And look how lit up that is. And up into the trees, those ones are a little closer. Back this way, through those photonic barriers you can over there, into those lights. So I tried to bring you guys here, just a place that was a little darker, didn't have as much light pollution in a suburban atmosphere, kind of looking inside of a residential neighborhood. This is a park, it's a little bit darker. See, look how awesome that is. And here's that same park location without night vision at all. All right guys, starting again. This is the IR laser. So we're starting there on that truck that is 50 yards away there. Switching over to laser and illuminator with the diffuser. So you can definitely see it there. Now no diffuser. And see it throws out a really nice square pattern. Again, that is 50 yards. All right, transitioning over to the fence. All right, the fence there is 70 yards away. So that is the laser. Now without the diffuser cap, excuse me, with the diffuser cap at 70 yards. And again, this really doesn't do it justice. And then no diffuser cap. So you can see the laser there, the nice square beam pattern, 70 yards. All right, pushing it to 100 yards, that car back there. That is exactly 101 yards away. So there's the laser. Laser and diffuser, or laser and illuminator with the diffuser cap. 
Let's see there, kind of lighten up the street. And then no diffuser cap. So you can see there's a really good job lighting up the whole street. All right, lastly, that fence line at the end of the street all the way down there. That is 201 yards away. Now with the diffuser cap on, so you're going all the way down there. And now diffuser cap off. And again, you can see easily throws out to 200 yards. And the furthest thing away is gonna be these trees back here, or that tree back there. That was 220 yards. So you can see this great illumination pattern. The first one that I used that was a US night vision branded laser. Um, I did use that in a night vision class that was hosted by um, US night vision. And that illuminator actually was not square. It kind of was just a large circle and it wasn't as defined. Um, this one from Threer um, is a square. So it is a square illuminator with, with defined edges and it has an amazing throw. Um, it's gone out to, to 400 yards, uh, no problems whatsoever, and still being able to identify and see targets for a civilian laser. Uh, tell me if you're, you know, your Hollow Sun or your uh, D Ball A3 can do that. Maybe your D Ball D2, but then this thing weighs seven ounces with the battery in it. And this brings me on to my next point is obviously the weight is seven ounces. The ergonomics on this thing are absolutely excellent. Just seeing how high this sits off the rail and being able to not have to use a switch and my thumb placement and the placement of this activation button is just perfect. Um, it rests directly where I want my thumb to be. And I just push the button and it literally is right there or I can just C-clamp and go back over the gun. It is in a perfect spot. Uh, next thing I wanted to go over was the construction of the physical laser itself. And <clears throat> like I was mentioning earlier, it is 3D printed. And the <clears throat> if you look at the underside of the laser, you can see that there are three 3D printed polymer, or excuse me, there are three 3D printed sections on the bottom sides of the laser that fit into the Picatinny. And the physical part now on this generation, or the current generation, is made of aluminum that you do tighten down to the top of your Picatinny rail um, instead of it being a 3D printed piece of polymer. The next thing I wanted to go over <clears throat> was the button um, or how you select what output you're using. It's extremely intuitive and uh, very easy to use in my opinion. It is just the right amount of stiffness. Now, however, when I first did get this laser, it was fairly stiff. Like it, it really took a lot of leverage to get that thing to turn. It has loosened up a bit and then time will tell if it continues to loosen up. But um, yeah, so the first position um, you will see when it's, when it's turned all the way counterclockwise is going to be the visible laser. <clears throat> you move it one click to the right, that is your off position. You will move it one more click to the right, that is your infrared laser. One more click to the right will be your infrared laser and illuminator. And all the way to the right will just be your illuminator. Now, going to the battery compartment, it is uh, O-ring sealed. Um, I did have a little bit of frustration. This is probably, it could just be mine. It is a tethered cap, but that screw, um, when I would start unscrewing the actual, um, so on my particular unit, there is a, a tether that is screwed into the back of the battery cap um, to keep it retained, which I appreciate, but for some reason mine is was tightened down so tight that it doesn't actually freely spin. So when you're unscrewing the tail cap, it would get all bound and wound up. And then when I was screwing it back on, it actually unscrewed the physical small screw in the back of the tail cap itself for the lanyard for retention. And the tail cap actually uh, fell off from that screw. Now, luckily I was able to, uh, you know, just find the tail cap and the screw was still retained in the tether and screwed it right back on. But haven't had any issues with, um, or haven't had any battery issues. 
and uh, haven't had any issues obviously with the o-ring and that is nice that it is sealed so there is uh, the activation button you can see is an Arasaka activation button. It is uh, very positive when you click, you definitely can feel the clicks on that. And it's not uh, too light where it's unintentional to activate. There is a, a definite push of a click. And if you double click the tail cap button, it actually does go to a permanent on mode. And, and similar to a peck, there is a small red light that you can see uh, either under nods or with the naked eye when the laser or the illuminator is activated. So even in daytime, you don't have your nods on and you double click the button on accident and it's an IR mode or um, you know the illuminator IR mode and you'll be able to see the red button or the red light will be on. So there was a, a concern of mine when I first got the laser or looking into it was the actual physical adjustments on the laser itself. They are, there's no clicks, there's no um, dial it is just there are two screws that are retained inside um, of the front body of the laser that you just use an allen key to turn those and that moves your laser there's no positive clicks now it is extremely stiff it definitely takes some uh you know it definitely has to be intentional to adjust the movement on the laser so i have marked mine with a uh, painter or um i have marked mine with um a paint pen uh, and so far, mine has not lost zero after probably 1,200 rounds of use. But at first, I was, it made me hesitant or I was nervous about it, you know, consistently retaining zero. Uh, but so far, there has been no issues. It doesn't catch on gear. Uh, it hasn't snagged on anything. As you can see, they are pretty recessed. And side note, the, the diffuser cap is not resistant to a two-year-old's fingers. So I let my son see the laser to shine it onto the ceiling and he immediately stuck his little finger into the diffuser and punched a hole through it. Luckily it is still functional and it is torn, but I do need to reach back out to 3EIR and get a new replacement cap, which they do have on their website. And this is the last thing that I do want to mention. Obviously I have a very high mount on this. This is the Unity mount, but the height over bore on this laser is excellent. Um, even when I've run it on a 193, scalar works um, your thumb does not protrude into your eotech or excuse me into your your red dot and then i did also run a unity mount for my exps uh, 3-0 so that was also at the you know the over two inch height uh, could not see your thumb in that as well and then i have run it on a standard lpvo on a one and a half inch mount and you cannot see the mount at, or see the laser at all in your vision inside um, of the the lpvo until you put your thumb on there to activate it, then you can slightly see um, your thumb. All right guys, now I wanna go over some of the cons of this laser and the first elephant in the room is obviously the price. I mean, $2,000. And when a uh, Brass Facts did a review on this laser, and I'm gonna use the term generation one, but the first gen, when the button here was just one large piece, there was no Irasaka cap, and also the mount was um, not aluminum. It was also a 3D printed mount and then the diffuser cap was a, a cap that could separate and it slipped on over the end of it. And I know that when he said he picked his up, I believe it was about $1,800. And now the price of this laser is, you know, $2,000 basically. Um, so that is a big con. That is as much as you would pay. I did find multiple full power packs uh, online, gray market, of course, um, for less than that, you know, $1,600, $1,800 to like mint uh pec 15s for about two grand so it is about the same price as a, a full power laser from the gray market the reason i went with this as mentioned the ergonomics the output and especially the two-year warranty um and especially the to me just the warranty part having a laser having a two-year warranty on it has, has been awesome but the cost this it is an expensive laser so that's kind of one of those i'm, I'm going to give you a you know, my opinions at the end, but that's kind of one of the negatives about this is it is one of the more expensive lasers on the market, especially in the civilian realm. It is the most expensive laser in the civilian realm. All right, guys, so now I'm gonna get into a few of the issues I've had with the laser. So when I first got the laser, I mounted it to my rifle and I did use an inbore red laser and the laser on this is a green laser. So I used the red laser for the bore laser and used the visible laser, the visible green laser um, to zero this in my backyard. So I threw it on the tripod, put a, a CAGWorks PEC-15 target, zero in target, up on my back fence, 
and got the visible laser um, and the, or both the visible lasers, the bore laser and the visible green laser aligned right where they should be, you know, about an inch apart and about, you know, two o'clock. And so I had that zeroed, I was like, oh, awesome. So then I switched it over to IR and that's where I ran into the issues. The IR laser was about four inches high and two inches to the left off from the visible laser. So there were co-alignment issues from the factory. I did reach out to Dave at 3EIR. And like I said, he was super responsive, uh, got back to me within, it was probably 20 or 30 minutes when I first emailed him, uh, sent him my serial number. He said, hey man, I'm so sorry. Yeah, send it back to me. It must have been when we were putting, you know, uh, when they were potting it. Um, so he said sometimes the laser can slightly tilt or shift. So he says it happens, send it back to me and I'll get it taken care of. He sent me a shipping label for free, um, sent it back to him and he had it back to me in five business days. So got it up there, you know, fixed it, the alignment issue, sent it back to me and I could tell in some of the creases there was some kind of like a black residue you know, I'm assuming it's the potting that was coming out from some of the screw holes in some of the areas. Um, and then took it out back, did the same process, used the visible laser, aligned it, switched it over to night vision, and then they were co-aligned. So that was uh, the first issue that I had. And they, they resolved it quickly. All right, and then the second issue that I've had, and this is just me personally, I've seen other guys running the same laser or seen pictures of it, and they don't have an issue. But it is, this laser sits so low on the rail that a Mark 18, if you can see, I had to move my M300 Surefire, which I was running on the right side of the rifle and did have to move it to the left side of my rifle and take off the pressure switch. Because this laser sits so low, the visible and IR laser housing sits so low on the rail that I tried four different mounts, um, including the Pro mount, a couple different Arasaka mounts, and I could get, or I could find nothing for the RIS-2 rail that would allow me to put my light over on the right-hand side of the rail. But I did learn during my night vision class anyway that running a uh, push button, you know, activation for your laser, or excuse me, the uh, pressure pads for your laser and having an ND or a negligent discharge of your, of your white light when you shouldn't be can get you killed in the streets. Um, so he recommended against it and just, so he said, hey, move the light over to the left side and just run a clicky cap and so that way there's no confusion whatsoever about NDing your light. So it's a problem, but at the same time, it needed to be, a, the solution was what had to be fixed or moved over anyway uh, for me to not have NDs of my white light. All right guys, so conclusion, is this laser worth it? To me, yes, it has been worth it. As of right now, like I was saying today, January 24th of 2024, um, yes, the laser is worth it. It is worth it in the terms, especially of ergonomics and the terms of weight compared to a D-ball, especially if, if, you're, if you want to stay civilian, it is hands down better than a D-ball every way in terms of activation and in weight on the front of your gun for marginally more expensive now. I know those D-balls, you can get them used for you know, $1,100, $1,200, but you can find these used if you're lucky for $1,600. I saw one go for the other day on TaxWap. So hands down, the Designate IRV is the best civilian illuminator, and I would spend the $2,000 on it again. Um, however, there do seem to be still some, some issues. Um, Brass Fax has had issue, his issues, I've had my issues, and I think I've watched some of Hop's videos. Um, he seemed to have issues with one of his lasers. So they are working through some of the kinks, and that's to be expected. Sometimes the new products, you just have to be a guinea pig if you're gonna invest in one of the newer products. So as of right now, I would buy this laser, but, um, this video should be up you know, on the 24th, Sunday, the week before SHOT Show. Um, that could change because I've, I'm very excited. I've seen Hollow Sun uh, talk about their Iris laser, which is their typical titanium body. Um, they're doing a, similar to an Ingal. There is, but this one's a slider switch instead of a turn knob on the back. And this is, it is a viscal or V-cell illuminator that is a civilian class you know, laser that will have that extremely high output illuminator. I'm not totally sure about the laser, if the laser is gonna be a you know, V-cell anyway, but just to get away around the fucking stupid FDA from regulating lasers. Um, so I'm very excited about that. And especially at the price point, the rumor is they'll be $1,500 or below. If that is the case, and knowing Holosun's reputation and their reliability for something that comes from China, 
um, seems to be excellent, however. So I potentially would hold out and see how some of the reviews and how that laser operates, and especially if it's a, a V-cell uh, laser as well. That for $1,500 or less over this, and then the ergonomic profile and the weight, uh, that might be the way to go. But again, $2,000 for this, most definitely. I would buy one, you get your warranty, and it is an awesome laser. All right, guys, uh, thank you for watching. Again, seriously, even the fact that I have 290 subs, um, that just kind of blows my mind that that many people uh, care about my opinion on guns. So super awesome, super fun. Thank you to all you for watching. And again, stay ready, stay safe, stay strapped. Keep your communities and yourself and your family safe. All right, guys, peace.